fuck off. Okay, listen, I'm pissed the fuck off. And the reason I'm pissed off is because, you know, I like this show. Some people don't like it. No, okay, I'll be specific. Azrin Oak doesn't like it. And he talks a lot of crap about it. But I really like Azrin Oak. And that bastard bubonic Nate. Fuck him. So, bubonic Nate doesn't like the show Lost. And uh, <clears throat> I really like Eisner Nock. I read his book. I procrastinated and never reviewed it. It was a good book. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's not the kind of book that has a conclusion to it. Uh, it's the kind of book that takes you on a path, you know, and there's a lot of views and vistas onto language and certain perspectives and interpretations. And, you know, the only differences I have with Azrenok is that I choose some different metaphors in my approach, but I enjoy all the more for that reason, you know, sort of walking through through that. I recommend it. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good thing. But Bubonic Nate couldn't boil an egg, you know. He's totally a different matter. And um, I used to like, like, I think he did some music for Tea Time, you know, with some rap music, and I was really pretty impressed with it. But fuck it, it, it now I think it sucks because he doesn't like, you know, Lost. And the complaint is um, he's all that the writing is, is crappy. Well, first of all, okay, it's a kind of fiction. It's sort of in a pulp style. But you can do that sort of thing, you know, in a, in a meaningful way. Now, even if it's not meaningful, I mean, this, the structure of the writing, where a lot of the energy goes in, is to make things tie together. You know, so one of the complaints Nate comes up with about, you know, their writing abilities is that they're just making stuff up to continually confuse you. And that is what I consider the David Lynch kind of confusion. I shouldn't badmouth David Lynch. He has some, you know, some interesting movies, and there is a vibe in that in the stuff that he does sometimes. But other times, it's just kind of like random, and you know, it's it, it kind of has that flavor of either it's very metaphorical, and maybe you could follow it that way, or probably it's just a bit, you know, something weird. He, if he comes up with an idea that seems weird, he'll use it, and things don't have to tie together, right? I'm not a great David Lynch, you know, analyst, so maybe I'm totally off there. Just trying to use some sort of characterization of that kind of thing, as opposed to a sort of more sci-fi approach to to this um, this uh, this thing, where you develop a canon, right? So the first rule is that you follow whatever you have done. Now the the, the people that are writing Lost, they had an idea for an end. And it's probably something along like, well, season one will show, you know, these survivors. Season two will show, uh, I should remember, I just watched them all over just the last couple months. You know, we'll show different things, then they're going back in time, and then, you know, and they're going to have six seasons. And so they've plotted it in, and there's certain arcs in there. But there's enough variability that different characters can fulfill different functions that they had on their, their map. And what, so what's important is that they'll follow canon. And so when they do think something up, maybe even as a joke, or it's like, we never thought we were going to do that. And in a sense, they've just made it up. Um, uh, you know, they stick to it, right? They stick to it. So then the test becomes if the end, if they can make the contradictions wrap out. Now, in a science fiction, yeah, you can always take a cheap shot, and with time travel, you can use it cheaply, you can use it in a sophisticated way, but even if you use it in a sophisticated, there's enough wiggle room that you can sort of swap out almost, you know, tons of different contradictions. You can switch around, and you can make unlikely events make, you know, total sense, because the person had been there before and seen it, or whatever you use. But, since you have 10 or 20 or however many contradictions and weird, how could they both be true sorts of elements in the story, how will they all unravel? Will people really, you know, will their relationships continue to make sense? Because so far they have done that. Well, they've introduced weird things. They've actually explained the whole parameters of the show, you know. Like certain weird things, even if they're new weird things, well, they're explained by the Dharma Initiative or the fact that there's some ancient or more ancient, you know, installations of some kind of equipment on the island. 
So I like it. And then also, yeah, it's a little bit pulpy in the sense that one of the, the, the poetic license that a writer in that kind of a genre gets to do is, yeah, they get to have, ex, you know, kind of extreme or even cartoon-like characters. But it's sort of like when The, Man, when the Flash was on um, PCP. Uh, you know, there can be a harsh quality to that, and they've, they've done that. The people are not just comic book, you know, characters. They have real flaws. They've, they're constantly tested on the island. Also, another thing I like about it is sort of on the, the, uh, in the islands, when you move to an island, people usually have a hard experience. The island tries to reject them, but like you're entering a cell or something. And, um, you know, it's hard to get a real quick job or something like that, even if there are you know, things you can just do to get some quick cash around, you know, working at farms and stuff. It's hard to even access some of this stuff. So, um, for a while. And so some of it's conscious, but some of it, you know, seems, you know, seems spiritual or whatever, poetic, the kind of thing you can write about in a narrative, in a novel that's maybe hard to philosophize about. And also, in the Pacific, these islands have this tendency to sort of, my interpretation, to push out of you, um, to push out like negative things, you know, your skin starts to get better or, or you know, you, you have certain, you know, if you've got a piece of pencil broken, you it seems to finally raise out after years. And the, the you know, that, that, that's my kind of a mythos thing. I mean, I know an example of that. It could have been for some other reason, you know, but it's just sort of you, spiritually, it's a metaphor. You feel that way. And so it can be both negative and good. It's like your, your negative side comes to the surface and you're tested again. Suddenly, if you have some bad quality, you're tested if you're going to fall for it again in your life, again in your life. And if you choose not to, you get better. And if you choose to, you sort of stay stuck, but you get another chance to get better. So it's it, that, in turn, is a metaphor for sort of life, where that's what we're trying to do when we progress. We're trying to recognize the things that we've done in the past that are unproductive to our conscious goals um, and our emotional goals, hopefully, if they're healthy and, and conscious as well, you know. Um, so part of our conscious goals. Uh, yeah, I guess conscious goals, intellectual and um, emotional, then... Um, you know, we're going to look for those things and we're going to try to see the, the pattern so that the next time we're given that decision, we don't do it. And if we're addicted, then we, we say, my God, it's like I have no control. I'm compelled, I have no will. Um, and if we're not addicted or we overcome the addiction, then we realize we have control and we become stronger. And that's one reason to overcome addiction, just in the general principle that it's good to become stronger. But not Nate, I think he should fucking get on crack because... You know, it, it's it's also sort of a high route thing. So he writes a book. And so I like the book. Big fucking deal, Nate. That doesn't mean that you can, like, trash something that's, you know, popular and interesting. And it's sort of a sci-fi thing. I admit, by getting into it, I'm kind of like, it's. I feel like I'm becoming a Star Trek geek or something. You know, I'm reading Lostpedia and creating an account. want to edit it and stuff. But fuck you. Yeah, Nate's going to go, you're a geek or something. You boil eggs for too short of a time or something like that because he's always on that like eggs are a huge thing or part of his diet or he hates eggs it's hard to know some sort of deep psychological problem with eggs and uh, we eat a lot of spam um, where I live and I don't really but I've eaten more spam than I ever had before in my life you know a piece or two